web page for the Museum of Natural and Cultural History. Okay. And a variety of others. And delve into it even further than we'll go today during the tour. Okay. But I'll give you a lot of information. All right. Specialist with Oregon Parks and Recreation Department. <laughs> yeah. But it's a great career. Uh, I get to do some very interesting things. Not in so America. good at this. <laughs> Because the Nelsons built that fence, we couldn't even throw it out together. So we were really good at putting these gates out in the middle of nowhere. See red, red ant piles on the way. Don't poke a can. Not good one, Dave. You're bad. One time, but one of the horses chewed off the other. It's so different, and it's smaller because of the conditions that runs into the ocean. A lot of steam eruptions, a lot of snap. Crackle a historical on. monument, a state historical monument, natural landmark, and all those other things. Anybody know? We all know them? there's that's that one horse or that one <laughs> cow that didn't <laughs> read the manual. <laughs> Just and enjoy the cooler temperature. In the summer, it's ten swallows, yeah. cave swallows, rats. So it's amazing what rat poo and pee can yield to a scientist just because of how old it is and all the material it's collected that's stuck to it over all those thousands of years. And archaeologists use those rat mittens and the information from those like that's what they felt like and that's what the stitchery the the workmanship was like behind the footwear that was found here and was excavated and what it was like when it was uh, first excavated by Luther Cressman he was a archaeologist from the University of Oregon he's the one that started the anthropology department at the U of O and founded the Museum of Natural and Cultural History on campus, which some of you have probably visited before. And if not, I would encourage you to visit. It's amazing. World-class facility, great museum, awesome place to visit. Well, Luther Cressman, uh, he had a theory that people had been here a lot longer than four or 5,000 years ago. So that was Luther's motivation to do archeological work in the Northern Great Basin. He had this theory displays to help him kind of get his theory set he said but he really needed and it was at this place same landscape that we're looking at but very very long time ago it's the time when the animal people were here and life was good uh here in the valley but there was one thing that just kind of always ruined it for the people always in the back of their mind it, it haunted their existence from day to day and that was the existence and the presence in the valley of the giant and his name was Nawuzaho and in northern Paiute Nawuzaho means people grinder and that's exactly what Nuzaho did he had a big stone basket that he carried with him and he had a people gathering stick he didn't see one fire one smoke he didn't hear one dog barking didn't hear anything no sign of the people man well, that's weird that's usually not the case but Nuzaho just kind of hung out in the back of the cave snooze and chilled third day he gets up his stomach was starting to growl the people say to this day it was so loud it sounded like a huge thunderstorm coming through the valley. It was that loud. Like shaking you know, a little bit. No, that's how it was for Nehuzo that morning. A little bit of a stomach ache, a little bit of a headache he could feel coming on. He felt a little quivery, maybe shaky in the knees. And all he can say is, hey, Nehuzo, I said, let's get started. I don't have all day. Go ahead and take that first shot. And just what? Nuzo says, I, I just hit you, Coyote, I get you this. And Coyote sees this from where he's watching all the festivities. He goes, hey, back there, where do you think you're going? Themselves. Many stories, legends, adventures they had at other places. But those are other stories at other places, at other times, of other people. And those aren't stories that we'll talk about here. Giant, that actually happened. And that's why 
we see everything that we see around us. When we look over at Fort Rock, we already talked about that missing part of the tuff ring, right? That broken out piece, what well, wasn't wave action. That's where Nuzo tripped. He kicked out the side. That's his old stone bowl. That's the people gathering bowl right there. How many of you ever been to crack in the ground? Well, that's where Nuzo's people gathering stick drug and caused a big crack in the earth's crust when he was trying to catch himself. Now that story, and it's true, it's it was created here at Fort Rock Cave. It was first told. It's never, ever been told anywhere at Fort Rock Cave. It's a story born of this place and told only here at this place. Even today, tribal elders, grandmothers and grandfathers bring their grandchildren out here and tell them that story because they can only tell it to their children or their grandchildren here. Okay, remember, no storytelling or saying the name of he who shall not be named. <laughs> you can think about the story, you can even paraphrase it as long as you don't say the name. Because you can't recite it. Well, the old interpretive pen. Still good info. That's before we did tours. We would give permission to people to access the site, kind of self-guided property, and have it ended up being a state park. A lot of pitfalls and things along the way, and, and sometimes it doesn't make a lot of sense. He's the